Uh, Where'd you get that scarf? This is Amazon. Who's Amazon? Amazon.com. Oh, okay. <laughs> I see. Did you hear about their drone service? Yes, I did hear about their drone. That looks interesting. I wish it were real, but there's so many laws. <laughs> How could you... I just, I'd be shooting down those things and taking Exactly. <laughs> it's like, why? Like, that's just, it's too... It'd be so cool, though. Expensive. Because if they did, like, people could very easily just grab it and keep it's it. It's like, yeah. <laughs> so, oh, man, I just, mm, I, I don't I don't like it. Unless it was, like, armed. That, hmm, that'd be interesting. But then you'd have armed, then it would be, like, <laughs> iRobot or something, where you have, like, you know... And the drones take over. Yeah, the drones just kill us all. It's like Terminator, then. But I did think that it was a really, really cool concept. Yeah, it does. I mean, that would be... I mean, you know, it would be, like... And all of a sudden, you just see like this thing drop a package at your door and then oh, fly off. Oh, that'd be so cool. <laughs> Thank you. That, that, would, that would be pretty cool. Um, yeah, so uh, oof, not not like many interesting things, just a lot of small things. I kind of just highlighted the big things. Um, this is episode five. Um, I also have some names. We made it to five, people. Yes. Um, the big number five, and we still don't have a name. No, well, not like an official name. Um some of the things that I uh, came up with uh, as a, from online and as well as just random putting things together. Um, one of the ones that I like is uh, You've Been Played, which is because in Uncharted 2, Harry Flynn says You've Been Played. So I don't know if we could call it, you know, You've Been Played, you've been played. Episode 5. Uh, That'd be a good... I know. Yeah, I like, I like that one. Because... Um, I like that line. Yeah, that line is really good. Um, Scratch Discs is another one. Is it, is it, um, oh. What? Scratch, di- okay, okay. Um, I don't know, I was just throwing things yeah, out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Smoking PlayStation, In Like <laughs> Flynn, Ragdoll Radio. I, <laughs> like Flynn. I, caught, I found that one from a, an online like discussion forum. Um, Dead Drop, uh, Blow My Cartridge, I thought was an interesting <laughs> one. Because <laughs> um, I've seen that before, uh, mostly on t-shirts though. Um, but yeah, that's another interesting blow one. That I, yeah, just blow my cartridge. Um, I if that's patented or I don't know. Copyright I, I mean, I don't whatever. think so. Uh, and then yeah, that's it. Um, as as far as like names that I've been able to actually kind of think that was good. But I my favorite is uh, you've been played, um, just because I love <laughs> I love that line. Then from... like the outro could always be the two talking hands. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> face it, genius! You've been played. You've been played. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So those are some names that I came up with that we could run with or ditch and find something better. Um, first up is in the UK, the PS4 launched in Europe this past, uh, weekend. Uh, so the PS4 record breaking numbers once again. Um, the most interesting part of this is that in the UK only, this isn't worldwide or anything, but Knack outsold Mario, uh, the new Mario game on Wii U, uh, in, pretty... in the UK, which is, it's one country, That's but it's still... a pretty still... staggering figure. Yeah. Uh, um, having... Uh, being a testament to, of success and failure. Yeah. At once. <laughs> uh. <laughs> um, I mean, they... UK oh people, they knew the reviews for Knack were not great. Right. But they still bought it, more so than the Wii U people bought Mario. Yeah. So that means there's not many Wii U's in the UK. <laughs> um, or... Just a lot of people bought PlayStation 4 and knack with it because it's a launch title. So there's not much else to play. So they decided to check it out anyway. And people do like it. Um, I mean, the reviews weren't that great, but I've seen on my Twitter feed other editors from IGN as well as other places do like Knack. Um, did you see Kyle Bossman's? I haven't seen No, oh, you need, we will watch that after. Because okay. he does a, because you remember how he was kind of like about a knack. knack. Yeah. So he finally yeah. addresses it. Um, at, I think post PlayStation Four episode, he addresses it, and it's a it's a that ending outro bit where like you know the credits kind of roll, and then he does his little small thing at the end. It was one of those, um, but it was really funny. Um, <laughs> also, PlayStation Four has now sold two point one million globally, so that is that's a lot. Yeah, um, I noticed on Amazon.com, I think today. Uh, this year's top items list, uh, the, the big picture was a PS4, and then the littler pictures was the iPhone 5, Xbox One. Yeah. I was like, what? This feels good. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, to be a Sony person and 
have it on top. Be like, we're finally on top. We're the man in this relationship. So. <laughs> yeah, um, it'll be interesting to see what the post uh, Christmas figures will be like. Just like, you know, after the after I, Christmas passes. I, well, we still have Japan. That's another thing. Yeah, that's um, February, I believe, uh, and that will probably sell another. It would be a triple victory. That for will Sony be on all a fronts. million. Uh, in Japan, definitely for launch, uh, which will mean that they will have sold 3 million because I think they wanted to sell 5 million by April, like the financial fiscal quarter or something. So, I mean, they are on track uh, to sell that, especially with the Japan, which is their home territory. I'm, I'm proud of them. Yeah. I'm very, very proud of them. Rolling, run it, rolling in the money, money in the bank. Yes. Um, Persona 4 Golden and Dragon's Crown have both shipped 1.5 million copies combined, uh, which is... Cool. Um, I don't like when companies say they've shipped this many copies instead of that sold mean this many copies. Anything really? Yeah. Um, so it's kind of suspect, but I still think that's great because that means um, each have shipped and hopefully will have sold more than five hundred thousand, uh, which I think is a success for Atlas because they're not a really big company. Your hair is kind of weird. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then EA says that the physical sales still dwarf digital sales. So I don't think we're, I mean, we're on the way towards it, but, uh, apparently for them, all of their physical fails are still like a very large majority from physical, uh, and not digital. Uh, so I don't know. Um, I like buying digitally, but I still like buying physically. Um, there's a related story to this, which is kind of why I'm hesitant to do digital stuff. Um, which is that Skullgirls, which was this fighting game released in... Looked like a cool game. Early, yeah. Uh, very, very, early very 2013. Sexy. It is being pulled from PSN and Xbox Live. As in the download is being pulled? Yeah. Or like your files are being no, pulled? No, no, just the okay. download. So after December 11th in America and December 17th in Europe, you will no longer be able to purchase it off of PSN and Xbox Live. So it's just like... Um, so if you lose your little digital copy... Yeah, you won't be able to... You, okay. Um, so that's kind of like, uh, okay, well, you know, this is kind of... Well, the, wh- why Why are they taking it down? Um, Konami apparently requested Sony and Microsoft to take it down. They didn't really say why. I don't know if it's because they've broken off relations with the developer. Because um, a developer said on Twitter uh, to, if you want to support us, buy it on Steam, because Konami actually gets most of the money if you were to buy it off of PSN and Xbox Live, which is a shame because I would only buy it on PSN, uh, yeah. not Steam, because I'm not a PC gamer. Um, but it's just, yeah, it's just really weird because it's just like this could ha- this could potentially happen to any other game on a digital-only sort of front. Uh, like, say, that game company, which made Journey, decides that they really don't like Sony anymore or something, <laughs> or like they say something and Sony's like, well, you know what, screw you guys, and then they just... You know, journey just kicked off, and so nobody will be able to get it again. Dang. Uh, so if you were to like start a new account, or um, maybe lose the file, or you like you know your hard drive gets wiped uh, accidentally, there's like no way you can get, get it. Back. It's gone uh, if it's forever. off the if it's off the servers. I mean, you can't. Your money just went to yeah them forever. Yeah, so that sucks. Um, that's kind of the downside of digital games. It's great because you get instant access, and it's always on the hard drive and stuff. But it also sucks because. If that copy is lost, then it's lost forever. Um, this has happened before. Um, the only other notable happening uh, or occurrence of it was this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game on Xbox Live. Um, it got taken down like two years after it went up, and so people could no longer purchase it. So obviously right now, if I wanted to actually try it out, I couldn't because it's, it's gone. It's gone forever. Yeah. So only people who have bought it have it now, and if they get rid of it, then... Pretty much, they won't be able to get it ever again. <laughs> yeah. So it's you know it's, it's kind, kind of, of a, a sad reality of this entire generation. Yeah. Um, as, or just any online game. Yeah. Um, and that kind of reminds me of Steam because Steam is digital only. Uh, so I'm wondering about you know with PC type of stuff. Um, I know you can always torrent it and find it online, but uh, but still with like you know what if a file gets lost or something or a license has to be renewed but they don't renew it and so the digital content has to be taken off of steam like it's just it's just weird because that doesn't happen with discs like i buy um say my old ps2 disc of grand theft auto san andreas you know it's like no matter what happens i will i will always have that disc like it'll never be unavailable the only thing that could happen to it is you know it would be scratched or 
Um, your console goes. Yeah, or my PS2 like dies um, or something like that. But I don't know. It just seems less risky than a digital file being wiped away forever. So that's a, a interesting thing. Um, Gran Turismo 6 has come out. The reviews are very good. Uh, Destructoid gave it a 9 out of 10. Polygon gave it a 9 out of 10. Game Informer gave it an 8 out of 10. IGN gave it an 8 out of 10. And Rev3 Games gave it a 4 out of 5, which is basically 8 out of 10. Um, so it's recommendable if you like driving games. And what of Forza? Forza 5 got... Uh, I think it got less. Uh, as a, far as a Metacritic average, I think it did could do less. Um, if you listen to Epic Battle Axe... Uh, which I don't, which you don't anymore. Um, they were talking about this recently uh, with microtransactions in Forza and how they're kind of not in it. Um, they also talked about it on Giant Bombcast. I think more notably uh, was that they they just didn't like the guy. It was disappointing because the guy said, "If I was not reviewing this, I would have stopped playing." So it was kind of like, "Ooh, that's not a like you don't want to hear that." Yeah. <laughs> uh, especially if you're like the developer, you don't want to hear that that somebody is basically being forced you to play this <laughs> so yeah it's just it doesn't sound fun and gt6 sounds like uh they've improved some things that people had complaints from five but also still lags in certain areas um i mean we're both not racing games but uh mm-hmm. gt6 is the best selling franchise for sony um i'm thinking about doing you know how i did with the nintendo chart i showed you uh with all the franchises and yeah. their sales I'm thinking of doing that with Sony franchises and, then, and seeing how they compare, uh, not to Nintendos, but just to each other to see how also, well. Yeah, I'd also do 360 because yes, those I should. two should always go side by side. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, some, yeah, I'm probably going to do that uh, probably today since I have nothing else to do um, besides that woman's tea thing later. Um, Destiny is going to be released September 9th, 2014. New trailer. Yes, new trailer. Um, It didn't really do anything for me. No, me neither. Yeah, it was... I don't know, it just it's I'm still kind of worried that all of it's going to be is just a borderlands less comedic colorful borderlands. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'll I'm probably if the reviews are good, I'll definitely get it. But if the reviews are kind of like Did did you see the eh. reveal for that? Oh, of course. You you saw the review for that space exploration game. Yes. Um I, I wish Destiny was like combined with that. Yeah, uh No Man's Sky, which is no being No Man's Sky. Which is being made by the same people who did Joe Danger, which was like that weird like stunt racing uh, game. Squid octopus thing that Oh uh, yeah. Or is that Octodad? I think that's Octodad. That's a separate guy. Uh Joe Danger is like the motorcycle stunt thing that you could do on PS3. Apparently it's good. I wasn't ever interested in it though. Um but it's being made by four people apparently, which is kind of cool because it does look pretty cool. Um everybody keeps saying procedurally generated, which I don't exactly understand what that means. Uh, I don't understand why that gets people so excited. But it does look cool. Um, I just hope it's not an empty world. Just, you know, I hope it's something like a Fallout or a Skyrim where, you know, it's a very large world and it is actually filled with, like, cool little things uh, that make it worthwhile. Because if it's like, um, I'm trying to think of a, what's, what's a bland open world that just is empty? Uh... uh. So, like sections of GT5, I'll GTA 5, actually. Assassin's Creed 1? Oh, yeah, yeah. Maybe. True. Um, when I think of... Well, GTA 5, actually, when you go, like, north of the city, there are lots of sections that just kind of exist. Like, they serve no purpose. There's no cool thing there. Like the deserts? Yeah. Yeah. Parts of the desert are just, like... They're just desert. Like, it's just... There's nothing there. There's kind no... Like Red Dead Redemption, almost, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Red Dead was, I don't know, it just seems more natural for Red Dead because it's the frontier and you could just hunt anywhere there. Um, I really liked Red Dead. I actually restarted playing it. Um, I got past Mexico, finally. Um, so I'm about to get go to the Blackwater part, which is like the northernmost region and the final region to unlock. Yeah, so yeah. I'm getting closer and closer to finishing it. Um, but yeah, that's still a really good game. Um, yeah, um, yeah, I just hope Destiny or uh, No Man's Sky isn't just an empty kind of boring world uh, i hope it actually is good and then destiny i hope is not a middling sci-fi action game uh it's kind of interesting as you know that uh bungie and gearbox you, you know who, they, who yes. they are i know bungie made halo and gearbox makes borderlands they used to be one studio really 
Yeah. When? And now and now Bungie's on its own and they're making a game like Borderlands. Like Borderlands. Huh. When how when did they or when did Gearbox get I it? would have to look it up. Where'd you see that? We can we can uh, I'll go to Wikipedia and we can use the magic of editing. Yes. Um I can see here in the Halo what? developers. Okay. They are under the primary developers there are Bungie, four three four uh, industries, who does it presently. Mm-hmm. And under, under the port section, the first thing in there is Gearbox. But what did they port, port it to? That's the question. I bet you it was the either the first or second Halo to PC, because Bungie pretty much did it on the console side. So I'm pretty sure they probably ported it to PC. I don't know. I bet you. Why would they port it? They wouldn't port it to console. It wasn't well, like were because it wasn't a PC developer. They were a PC developer. Yeah, but Bungie that. made Halo Combat Evolved, and it came out on Xbox. It didn't come out on PC until later. Is you sure? Yes. Look oh, it up. I Look up Halo okay. Combat Evolved. Then Gearbox Software did that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Gearbox is cool. I like them. Thanks. Um, and related to Gearbox, Telltale uh, announced Tales from the Borderlands, which is kind of like. The Telltale's take on the Borderlands universe. It's um, a DLC. No, it's going to be an episodic game, uh, like Walking Dead or okay, yeah, yeah. The Wolf Among Us, which is what they're working on right now. Uh, and then they also announced um, that Telltale is working on a Game of Thrones episodic content. I've never watched Game of Thrones. I probably never will, but apparently it's really big. So it pe- is really big. People are excited about it. Um, so they, I don't know. That's interesting. It just seems like they're kind of taking on too much. Because, I mean, they made The Walking Dead. That was really cool. Then they started making this thing called The Wolf Among Us, which apparently is cool, but I still need to play. Um, they've only done one episode of Wolf Among Us. And now, all of a sudden, they've announced that they're taking on two more projects. So, I don't know. It seems like they're spreading themselves too thin. Like, I think they should just focus on The Wolf Among Us, get that finished, and then put out Borderlands. And maybe they will. Maybe they've just announced this as a hype sort of thing. Uh... So, I don't know. It's just interesting that they're announcing two franchises that they've got the license for to do. Um, it would be kind of cool if Telltale kind of becomes like this, uh, like this, not like side developer, but it kind of takes properties that exist and twists them into different sorts of ways. Like, imagine if they did, uh, they took the Resistance IP yeah. from Sony and did some sort of like adventure sort of thing where you're like a soldier and you're going through like Serper or something during the outbreak and you like you know you make decisions on saving certain people and whatnot like i don't know it just seems like they, they would be make, um, resistance dance central yeah i think uh... <laughs> chimera just you know jiving around yeah um but i don't know it just seems like they would be they would be cool to come in and do take ips and just do a twist on them like they could do that to anything especially now that they've done borderlands which is another I mean, Borderlands 2 sold really well for 2K, and now they're also, they got the gigantic license of Game of Thrones, which is really big right now. So they, you know, they were able to get these two big licenses, so who's to say they wouldn't be able to get another license like Uncharted? Like, Uncharted would actually be a pretty good episodic type of thing. It would. Um, to tell. Um, that that could be how you get your Eddie All Raja game. are just separate. Yeah, uh, that's how you could get your Eddie Raja game, it would be... A telltale Eddie Raja yeah, I'd love that. adventure I would, where I like you, that. you play as him and you get to choose like who to save, who to kill, and then in the <laughs> end it's you're on the you're on the island with the other guys and you meet Nick Nate, Nate. And then it's just like to see the rest of this story, play Uncharted Drake's Fortune. <laughs> <laughs> Thirty dollars on PSN. Uh a very disappointing thing is that Fallout Four, the teaser site that they had, which was like Survivor two two nine nine, was just a big hoax. Pretty much, this guy had put out this elaborate scheme to trick the inter- internet into thinking it was a Bethesda site uh, that was going to reveal Fallout 4 on December 11th, which was two days from now. Um, but this past weekend, I think right either right before or the same day as the VGX, uh, basically the site changed and it was a video that was like a Rickroll sort of thing. <laughs> and it was basically the guy saying, um, yeah, sorry, this was all just a lie. So it was just, it was so disappointing because I was really hoping Bethesda <laughs> was just lying about it not being a teaser. Because um, Bethesda said, like, you know, we have no announcements for Fallout at all. 
uh, at VGX or at any other time. And I thought, I was really hoping that they were just lying so that they could just come out and say it and everyone would be like, whoa, no way. Um, cause I mean, really, they don't have to sell the, they don't have to tell the truth. They could just say, no, we don't have anything planned. And then they just come out and say, yeah, we actually do. Um, I mean, that would be great. Uh, but no, it's just a big hoax by this one guy who had, apparently he had a lot of money and he used the quote from The Dark Knight, I just wanted to watch the world burn, uh, like the Joker. <laughs> so it was like, ah, God, that sucked. <laughs> um, also in really retarded news is there's this 19 year old father who wanted to buy an Xbox One for his four year old son. So if you do the math on that, he had the kid when he was 15. First big mistake. <laughs> Second big mistake was buying a picture of an Xbox One from eBay for like seven hundred dollars. Um, so he got sent a oh, picture I, I get it. Uh, of the Xbox One, and he paid the guy seven hundred dollars. So apparently he got his money back, and this UK retailer actually gave him an Xbox One uh, for like free, I think, or something. But it's just like, ugh, like just looking at the story, I'm just like, oh my god, why are you even giving this person any attention? First of all, he was he had a son at 15 years old. It's like, god, what is wrong with you? <laughs> what are you doing with your life? Well, maybe the woman was like old. I guess, but just oh, god, <laughs> your 15 year old raising a son. It's just like, no. No, this is not, no. That's, That's wrong. Nice. That's bad. Um, and then you're buying your four-year-old son an Xbox One. That means you're, 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 you're spoiling him. He's four years old. I know. Who needs an Xbox One when they're four? He's probably just buying himself. He's probably going to buy him Rise, Son of Rome, too, and have him chop off people's arms and stuff. Uh, it's just like, God, you're a terrible parent. And then he, he gets scammed. It's like, really, obviously, how could you not tell that that was a scam? Um, so he's he's just dumb. Um, and then eBay actually gets him his money back, which is even worse because now it's encouraging this type of behavior because, hey, if you get messed up, if you get scammed, you actually just get your money back. So it doesn't matter. And then he gets an Xbox One for free from this retailer. It's like, oh, my God, this is just the perfect storm of you are showing people that it's OK to make bad decisions. So, God, it just pissed me off that this kid, this stupid 19 year old father. 15, oh, yeah. Well, he had the son yeah, yeah, who was yeah. 15, which is worse now he's 19 years old and he has a kid it's just like me having a five-year-old son it's like god no no never never that'd be strange god that'd be terrible that would suck you know what i'm loading up right now uh i don't know runescape oh god <laughs> um uh next up is vgx was god awful just um and explain yes guess. i'm gonna explain it right now to you um first off no audience which is just insulting to whoever would show up to the actual thing because nobody would clap for you besides joel McHale, who was the host who i'll talk about later um as well as jeff Keeley, who's actually okay i'll talk about him later um but there's no audience there's no excitement on screen there's no excitement in the sound it's just a host yeah talking which is not good um i actually wrote an article or not an article a short thing right after i watched the vga saying this is how you can fix the VGAs. Um, and so I detailed it like, you know, first off is the audience. Um, basically, you need to have an audience because the audience is excited. The audience obviously will be made of gamers who want to go and see these developers. They know what the games are. They know who the developers are. They know all of this sort of stuff. Um, but unfortunately, they didn't have an audience, which was just it just it just meant that it was dead air all the time, which is not fun to watch. Um, secondly, um, is have hosts who aren't trying to be funny because the entire time they were basically performing live in front of a camera and they acknowledged that they were going off the teleprompter. They acknowledged that there were predetermined lines that they had to say. Um, like Joel was just, it just looked like he did not want to be there. He did not want to do this. He acted as if like they kidnapped his family and he was being forced to be there. He was drunk beforehand and his wife woke him up and told him, hey, honey, you have to do the VGAs. And he's like, oh, God, do I really? Um, he just hated the lines, too. Like when I look at him and he's looking at the teleprompter and saying those lines, I can tell like he just hates it. Like he's just he does not want to be there. Um, and so my advice would be instead 
get people who are used to being in front of a camera and actually know what they're talking about, such as Greg Miller, Max Scoville, Adam Sessler, Jeff Keighley, just have him be with these guys. Yes, Daniel Kaiser, or Kyle Bossman, too. Or Kyle Bossman. Or Angry Joe, um, if you get him on there, too. Oh, he would uh, be raging. <laughs> yeah, because that would be great, because these are video game media people who have good personalities, who are funny. Um, like the people of gaming. Yes. Actually... And they can play off of each other. Yeah. Um, because they know every, they know each other. Um, cause I mean, these people uh, constantly attend, you know, review events and stuff. They know who each other are. They respect each other as well. So it would be great to have them just all get together and, uh, host the entire night. Um, or not even, or just have them, each person have a specific section where they'll interview a certain developer. Like have Greg Miller at the very beginning interview this person, then have Kyle Bossman interviewing like Mark Cerny <laughs> or something. <laughs> um, you know, have Max Scoville be there with his Hawaiian shirt interviewing some other guy. Like it would be great. Um, no, uh, did you, did you see the acceptance speech from, uh, oof. Naughty Dog? Is it Irrational Games? For Where they were... Best Shooter? That was... Uh, uh, people liked it, apparently. I was just... I thought it was funny. It's I like... thought it was awkward. Um, Because they were just like, you know, oh, I don't know what to say. I'm just like, oh, this is... Thank I don't you. know. Yeah. Um, It was just whatever. Um, Also, Best Shooter, Infinite, I disagree. Oh, I, I cannot agree with that anymore. <laughs> um, Maybe The Last of Us. But... Well, just the shooting. The shooting itself was not, like... It was, sir. It was mediocre. Well, shooting. I think it was quite uh, top notch. I guess. Um, I wouldn't. Oh, I don't. Last of Us wasn't like a shooter either. Um, I was thinking more like Battlefield Four. Like that is a shooter, but Bioshock Infinite was not about the shooting. Um, anyway, let's not talk about that. Um, also the hosts. Uh, they can perform good interviews with developers because if they were to be people like Adam Sessler, it's what they do for a living. Yeah. Well, so it. it, it what I used to hate about the VGAs was that they would go off topic, have random ungaming re- related personalities come yes, in. That was terrible. Uh, like Samuel actors Jackson. or whatever, just to announce an award and sit in the audience. I didn't like that. Yeah. Uh, they would have guest artists come in and do a random music video or on stage performance, mm. and no one really cared about that. Uh, the overall atmosphere was, uh, I guess, kind of insulting to gamers. Yeah, it so, still is. But yeah, uh, I, I mean, I was just telling you before beforehand that Angry Joe had a show about how all gamers hate, pretty much hate the VGAs. Yeah. Like all pe- all people who would really consider themselves gamers do not really support the way the vgas are handled yeah because it just it it miss it misrepresents who well, it kind of disrespects we are. us yeah <laughs> and it, in, it insults us because it's like you know this is what you think we are it doesn't like, make me very proud to be in this industry I guess. yeah it's like i don't want non-gamers to watch that show and think <laughs> definitely that is what being a gamer is like it's like no it is not it's not no, like it's, that yeah so and that was his argument uh, because he knows that Jeff Keighley knows that it's a giant, yeah, uh, festering cheese ball, <laughs> but he he goes, does it anyway with a straight face, very yeah. in a very politically correct way. Yeah, because he has to, because he gets paid to do it. <laughs> yeah. So um, I think if he could, he would do it very differently. Um, another thing is just don't. No, it's just the hosts when they're performing live, just don't be funny. Just. Trying to bring out humor throughout all three hours or however long, it just sucks the quality out. Comedy is much better in small bursts than elongated drags, um, especially when you're doing it live. So instead, I think that they should rely on pre-made footage, which is com- comedic, to do it. The best comedy skit from VGX was Mega64. They did the Todd and Aaron Game of the Year awards again. I Have you not seen Todd and Aaron? Remember best thing? like they're just like... Game Stupid. of the Year, Call yeah. of Duty, yeah, Modern yeah, yeah. Warfare 2. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So it was that. Yeah, yeah. They did that for this year, and it was great. Um, I'll sh- you have to watch it afterwards. Madden 20. Madden 2011. <laughs> Best hero with a game. Madden 2011. <laughs> Best game featuring Black Ops. Mad in 2011. <laughs> um, yeah, that was great. Like that was the that was the best thing. Um, it was just gold uh, comedy, gold. Um, so rely on that instead of you know having the hosts deliver like these stupid corny 
like uh, pre-written <laughs> awkward jokes that yeah. are just dead. Um, also, it's an award so uh, an award show. And while yes, we watch it for I mean most of us watch it for the reveal trailers. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't ignore the awards. Yeah. VGX this year had many awards given during the pre-show, which basically sends the message that they weren't important yeah. to be aired during the yeah. actual event. So that was really just insulting to developers, I think. Um, leave the comedy to the ones who do it on YouTube and get a million hits. The time slot is a smaller problem as well. It went live at 3 p.m. Like that, that's yep. not, no, that's not a good time to have an award show. Um, so I would recommend having it at like 5 p.m. Pacific time, which is good because then it's 8 o'clock uh, Eastern time, which is still good. I mean, people are going to stay up late Saturday night anyway, getting drunk to watch this. Um, and then, you know, have it 5 p.m. Pacific time when it's dark. You can have people over to your house to like, you know, have a party and enjoy it yeah. and whatnot. Um, and especially because they're debuting it on the Internet, which they're not even taking up time on TV to do this. So it's not like people are, I don't know, it's not like you're taking up primetime slot. I mean, yeah. who watches TV? Like what premieres TV on Saturday night? It's usually Sunday night anyway. Yeah, um, yeah it's just, just the, they ignored the awards. They gave out the awards halfway through i mean they gave the game of the year award which is supposed to be you know the biggest thing halfway through the show so it just kind of sucked the whole and, award and aspect everyone, out of it. everyone was thinking it uh nothing more from naughty dog yeah that was uh, another sucky part was like no naughty dog didn't show up uh to you know show off anything new um it was just uh the the judging committee I think should just be made up of the top two editors from like each major gaming outlet, like IGN, Game Trailers, GameSpot, Kotaku, Polygon, Ref3, and so on. Because I looked at the uh, the whole like list of judging people, and they were just from websites that like I have no idea about. I thought it was based on a vote again. It was based on a vote of people made up from various websites that I don't know, like oh, so just like weird Senate, websites. Senate or whatever. Yeah, it was just, it was strange. Um, so I think you should have, you know. <laughs> That's such a weird yeah, system. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, there was one person from IGN. I don't think there was anybody from GameSpot there, which is another major outlet. It's like. It had three people from Polygon, which is like, what? Like, it ain't I don't, a party without GameSpot. Yeah, um, it was just, I don't know, it was just weird. Um, but I think they should have more, like, just people, that editors who we kind of just know. Like, if you had, uh, I don't know. Who's an editor from Game Trailers that you know? Uh, My favorite? Who was the douchebag guy? Who was him? Shane Satterfield? Yeah, what if they had the him? the old editor-in-chief? Like, imagine if they had him on the judging committee. Like, that would be good. That, I think that would be good. I hate that guy. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I just think it would be better. Um, also, the montage that they played for The Last of Us was using E3 2012 footage. Remember when they showed the apartment thing and he killed and, the guy with the yeah, shotgun yeah, at the end? Yeah, he the guy in the face with a the shotgun. They were using that footage as a hype montage for The Last of Us. They didn't even use the actual footage from the actual game. <laughs> they were using the footage that they showed a year <laughs> and a half ago. Why is that so bad? It's just like, what are you doing? Like, the health bar was that long bar. It yeah, wasn't yeah, the yeah. one in the side. It was like, what the hell is this? This is stupid. <laughs> Like, it just bothered me that they were using old footage in order to do this. Well, yeah. It, the, the whole idea is that it's kind of insulting. Yeah. Uh, just uh, so god-awful. Um, they need to hype up the awards, like, have better montages of the game. And whenever they deliver who the winner is, like, open an envelope, because what they do is they just stare at a teleprompter until the name scrolls into view, and then they say, oh, the winner is... Naughty Dog! It's just like, that yeah. doesn't... It's just... Uh, it's, it's, it sucks. Um, this year especially, they had world premiere trailers that did not debut any new games. It was basically newish footage of games we've already yeah, seen, yeah. which was disappointing. Um, the one for The Division was a graphics trailer, but the only thing that kind of bothered me was that it was a... It was know, from the same demo that they did yes, before. It was the same exact the location. Same spot, the, yeah. So like, it gives the impression that that is the only part that they have yeah. actually finished and the rest is still need to be done um so yeah it was just like uh it's just no um what they need to have is the bethesda skyrim or the naughty dog uncharted 3 premiere where it's like the holy shit this is happening moments yeah like where you're just like oh my god this is like this is big like oh my god i can't believe this is happening like you need to have that um like if you're not going to have those then just just don't bring anything into it like just don't try to hype up 
trailers that yeah, are just, just disappointing. Just, just have those be the a giant party. Yeah, yeah, just have those be the pre-show filler um, or like the commercial break almost. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I mean, it's pretty basic. Have an audience, have hosts who are in gaming media and know how to talk on a live camera. Save the humor for the professionals, actually have some <laughs> substance to the awards you're giving, and deliver on the oh shit moments. If you have these things, we would be much happier Saturday night. So yeah, so please, Spike TV, you you can salvage what's left of the VGAs. You just have to <laughs> suck up your pride you and stop trying to, to make it yeah. a Hollywood affair. Do what you do every day on game trailers. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's, I mean Kyle Bossman could put together a, pre- a better yeah, production than yeah. that was. Um, oh, did you see his Twitter profile picture? No. It's, oh god, it's a hilarious. Right, we're going to use the magic of editing? Uh, yeah, I mean we can. I'll just have to mark the time right, spot just... again. That's the picture. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. We'll have to pull that up. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. put that in the in the thing when I say it. It's just like, oh man, he's funny. Um, you should take a picture of like yourself doing. <laughs> Look, I can be him too. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, Kyle Bossman's pretty funny. I love, I love um, that guy. During <laughs> during the VGX, uh, he tweeted a few times. Um, what did he say? Uh, I get the impression that Jeff is just as let down as all of us. Uh, Joe McHale is reading the, all these jokes like he hates them, and it's honestly perfect because we hate them too. Destiny looks great, but this song sounds like one of those cute paper towel commercials. Wait, did we just vote to see The Division over The Witcher 3? I hope those people who voted to see The Division were really into how great the show looks on the cars. Or the snow looks on the cars. Yeah. I'm all in for No Man's Sky. That was really the best trailer so far. Irrational's expectant speech was actually kind of genuine and great. Damn it, that Joel Banderas was great. I didn't realize that this was the end. I guess the final premiere was a second Titanfall commercial. Thank goodness for No Man's Sky, huh? And that was it. Um, the greatest Twitter freed, though, during this time was by a man named Jim Sterling. Um, he was formerly of Destructoid, and his tweets during the uh, VGX was just awesome. But the trailer that did not disappoint, I guess, would be The Witcher. Really? I didn't pay I thought, attention. I thought it looked cool. What is it? What is The Witcher? That's a PC game, right? I believe so. Okay. Um, the one that did it for me, my favorite thing of the thing, was Broken Age, that Telltale Double Fine game that Elijah Wood is apparently voicing. Um, I am not familiar with no, what I'll show you the, about. No, I'll show you the trailer after. Um, but it's just... It looks so good. Like, it's an adventure game, uh, like the point-and-click type of adventure game. But it just it looks beautiful because it's basically 2D paintings, almost. Um, and Elijah Wood voices the main character, one of the main characters. There's two main characters. Uh, the first part is Elijah Wood as a guy who is on this spaceship that takes care of him, but also keeps him from, like, doing anything fun. Or, basically, it keeps him from exploring the outside world. It kind of, like, is a protection sort of uh, ship. Like, he talks about it as, like, it was an escape pod from his world that was basically being destroyed. And so when he was a kid, like a very small kid, he escaped it through the ship. And so the ship takes care of him, and it loves him, and it, you know, makes sure that he's safe. But he's kind of, like, he wants to get out of it. He wants to go and explore and be a part of the outside world, but the ship won't let him. So it's basically a story about him rebelling from the ship and going out and exploring the world and seeing that there's apparently, like, a war going on out in space that he wants to be a part of. Um, so it's very interesting that way, because um, I've never really seen anything like it. And then the second part of that same game is about this girl who lives in like this weird like cloud sort of city. Um, and it looks very interesting. Um, in her part, Jack Black is apparently one of the voices of the character, which is great because Tim Schafer and Jack Black have worked together on uh, Brutal Legend. Yeah. Um, so now Jack Black is once again back with him doing... Uh, I beat it, yeah. Yeah, doing this character uh, who's like a cloud, like a big fat cloud guy. Um, and so, yeah, so he gets to voice him. So, I don't know. I think it looks it looks very interesting. Um, I'm very uh, excited to play it. Um, have you played anything recently? Uh, have you, how's Killzone Shadowfall uh, well, What's it called? Uh, Demon Souls. Oh, yeah. How's that? Which may or may not be what I'm going to shout out to. What do you What do you think of it? I like it. It's very hard. Yes. But I like it. Did you beat any, like, the boss bosses? No. No, okay. No, I, I've tried like a million times on one place, <laughs> and I can't really get past it. What uh, What was your start? What area did you choose? What's it like? I don't remember that. No? Uh, is it like a medieval castle? It's like, yeah. It might be that. 
Or Terry. it's like a... I chose a mage. Okay. And it's like this courtyard. Maybe it could be a castle. Okay, I think I think that's the first area that I chose to. Because uh, there's this Bolteria castle, which is kind of like a classic medieval castle sort of thing. There's this weird mining-like place where you basically go deep into this mines. Um, then there's like this swampish-like area, which is kind of weird. Um, then there's this like countryside medieval sort of area yeah. and then i think there's a fifth unlockable area but you don't get to that until you beat the other ones um but i started out with the bolteria palace i think i got i beat two bosses in what, that air world what class are you uh i think i'm just a knight oh. with like the the you know the box art i'm that character yeah, you're that one yeah um so i use a shield and a sword um and then i've heard um, I've heard Demon Souls is harder than Dark Souls, uh, but Demon Souls is still really hard, and Dark Souls is probably still really hard for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's been a slog to get through. Um, there'll be moments where I'll be like, I'm going to play this, and then I just go play it. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, it's kind of, it's okay. I can see why people really like it, but personally, I'm not, I don't think I'll I, ever. I like the combat. Yeah. I'm surprised no one else really is doing that right now. Oh, that sort of combat? Yeah. It is pretty cool. Um, I don't know. I think maybe people don't do it because it's just... it's. I don't know. Maybe they consider it clunky, even though it is pretty refined. Uh, I don't know. If, can you do parries as a mage? Uh, yeah. You can? Yeah, you can. Okay. Because uh, I like doing I think parries. they all have counters, yeah. Yeah. Um, I like doing counters as a, as a knight where I get to time it right and you knock them back and then you do like the super powerful like stab with my sword it's yeah. pretty cool i did that a few times in accident yeah a lot of people describe it more as a stamina uh what should we call it like stamina is the most thing that you'll be watching over um like it's not about your health it's not about like your attack sort of oh. stuff. it's all about keeping your stamina at an optimal so that you can fight yeah so that you can fight um and sprint and block and like do everything because it's all tied back to stamina pretty much so people like kind of refer to it more as like a like a stamina or something i don't know how you pronounce it or whatever the word is but like they use some unique term for it um but they kind of like focus on the stamina more than anything else because yeah. stamina is how you block how you dodge how you make your attacks and stuff so it's more about that than anything uh, yeah it's interesting um i've played red dead which is still really good um, still a lot of fun to just go hunting and knife open <laughs> carcasses and stuff. Um, so I'm really enjoying that. Uh, First time I saw that, just him knifing an animal, like all casually. And then... You get the blood like showing on the yeah, screen. And then and you, stuff. It, it pans back out and it's just, just a this not skinless bison that... <laughs> corpse. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I finally beat, I got out of Mexico finally. Um, the combat. I really like the combat in that game. Like, if I could, I could just... I would shoot people the entire game. Because <laughs> uh, I really like the combat. Just going from pistol to rifle to, like, the shotgun to, like, everything. The cover system works pretty well. Um, yeah. Not as well as, say, other shooters. But, uh, I mean, it works well enough that I enjoy it. Um, and I don't know. It's just something about the Wild West setting that just makes it so appealing. Um because, I mean, you know, in most other games, if you were to have, you know, that six shooter that can only reload one bullet at a time, or, yeah. like, the repeater that, you know, one shot each, like, you know, you don't have a machine gun or a pistol or anything, it's, you know, these old Western things, it wouldn't work. But in Red Dead, it just works so well, because it's just an integral part of the <laughs> world. Uh, it's just awesome. Um, also, just, I like I love how simple the uh, shooting thing is, like, it's just that little dot. When you ever, whenever you aim, it's just that little dot, and you can just aim it around. I that's, suppose that's your dot. I love. I don't know. I just like I that. For irons, yeah, or... I guess. But it's third person. How are you gonna have irons and people or developers go down oh, yeah. the sights sometimes? I, I guess. I just I like the third person shooting more. Me too. Uh, me too, actually. But um, for aiming, nothing beats. The... Uh, yeah. Um, something a little game that people have been talking about like since it came out was Gone Home. Um, I finally played it, and it's really good. I really liked it. Um, I don't know if it's like 
super super amazing but it is pretty good um the best thing it does is it basically elicits emotion from you um so are you are you ever gonna play it do you think you would ever play it it's a pc game only do you want me to and maybe spoil it? if i got a pc someday do you want me to spoil it for you and explain certain things or should i not let, let, let's not okay let's, let's um not. <laughs> all right i'll i'll use vague otherwise, terms otherwise basically you are in this house and you look for things that tell you give you information and so as you're reading notes as you're looking at certain things and finding other things and basically environment is telling you a story um and so there are like a few little separate like plot line sort of things that you continually expand as you find more stuff as you explore more parts of the house and so it's really cool because there's there's a very obvious main narrative that it's driving you along um but it's not about your character it's about somebody else and so that main narrative though is just it's just really good like at the end i was really like attached to these people i wanted to see um them survive or not survive but like i wanted them to have a happy ending basically yeah, yeah. Um, and then the other narratives were really interesting too. Um, just the the way that they went about it and portraying these characters and their struggles and the resolutions that you potentially find. Um, you know, it's just really good. Um, they're like, you know, you don't have to actually find them at all. You can just find the main things and proceed through the main narrative and go through it quickly. Or you can just scour everything and find, try to find everything. Um, I tried to find most everything, but when I got closer and closer to the end, I was really invested in seeing how it ended. So I was more focused on advancing the main narrative than expanding upon the other little side plot sort of things. That's really good. Um, another thing it really does is uh, it really was anxious because I know because people told me before that, you know, it's nothing. You don't fight anything. It's just you in a house. But just the darkness of the house would, like, freak me out. Scary. Because, yes, because I would go into i would open a door and it would just be dark and i'd be like oh like, i don't i don't want to go in there like i need to find the light but i just like just anxiety of just having it be open because there's like a rainstorm going on at the same time so it kind of you know makes puts you on edge because there's lightning and thunder and stuff um but just the house itself like the way it creaks when you like walk through it it's just it's kind of creepy at points um so i basically had every light on by the end of the game on every light and turned it on because i <laughs> didn't want any parts of the, to be in the dark um, so it's, it was really good. Um, it's really short too. It's only like two hours. Um, I think it, I think I bought it when it was like ten dollars on Steam. I don't yeah. really. I think I think it was worth it. Uh, well worth it. It's a really good game. Uh, so you should try it eventually if you ever get to it. Um, but those are the two main games that I've played this past week. Uh, I've played bits of Diablo three again. Still a really fun game, uh, especially when you're doing co-op. Uh, and then I started playing GTA five again. Uh, just doing missions that I liked and trying to get like a gold star rating on them. Uh, but yeah, that's about it as far as game goes. Uh, so yeah, the Amazon drone service is like the only other interesting thing that's happened. <laughs> uh, was that even this, this past week or was that yeah, the week that was this week? past okay. week? Uh, it was like last Thursday or Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that that happened. Oof. Well, I'll just give my shout out. How's that? Oh, you can do that. My shout out goes to a guy on YouTube known as Peanut Butter Gamer. What? Maybe some of you have heard of him. I've never heard of him. Maybe some of you are like Steven and are never heard of him. Incompetent. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Whatever. I'm sorry I don't subscribe to every channel I see like you. I do. subscribe to every channel I, know you, I see. You subscribe to like everything. Well, uh, he is... Does he eat peanut butter while he's playing? I don't know where his name comes from. I have yet to discover that. But he had a video on Zelda Majora's, or Majora, or Majora's Mask. Uh, About what? Just the game uh, itself? It, well, he does... Actually, no, it wasn't his channel. It was someone else's channel. Oh. Maybe this whole shout-out goes to the wrong person. Wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but he's in the video. He like, is a guest in this video. Oh, okay. He, he is a guest in this video. Okay. And it's called uh, Link is Dead and it's about uh, it's a game theory I think it I can look up the channel now but uh, there's this game theory channel that has theories yes about games oh mm. yeah where uh, that's why they have the name game theories game theory 
That's and then they always say it like that. It's a game theory. Okay. And so this theory is that Link is dead for the entire length of Majora's Mask. So it's all a dream. It's oh, well, they theorize that it's all kind of a purgatory. Oh, purgatory. Okay. And they say. At the beginning, when he falls down that thing, or when he gets knocked off the horse, that's when he died. Mm. And so now he's stuck, and uh, they were saying, you know, the the five stages of death. I forgot what they were. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, the it leads to acceptance. They're saying it's the same five stages that you go through. Go through Clock Town, then whatever the dungeons are area. Yeah. yeah. And it all lines up because they're dealing with pain in all these areas. They're dealing with pain in, okay. in a different way, and it lines up. Very interesting. And so Link has to overcome each of these things before he can move on into heaven, the next thing. Zelda and then heaven. Into, well, they theorize that since he died in the Lost Woods, he became a... Oh, right. The a, uh, what, what you call it? Skeleton a, a thing. Skull Kid or a Stalfos. Which then leads to Twilight Princess... Where he appears again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. That makes sense. Basically. So what, who's the friend he's searching for? Because at the beginning of Majora's Mask, it's like, you know, Link It's left. Navi. It is? Yeah. So, yeah. So when he, oh. you meet the happy mask salesman. Yes. Who, I, I don't know if you've... Have you I've beaten played, it? Have I've you, played it. I haven't beaten it, no. Oh, well. Uh, I've seen the He end. says you've met with a terrible fate or something like that uh, okay. and so every time you die in the game you hear him snicker and say you've met with a terrible fate the same thing that he said at the very beginning of the game hmm. when you maybe died okay and so it blew my mind you need to watch the entire thing. well do you ever did you ever put together your top 10 of all time no uh do you have a top 10 of like current gen yeah What's the first hey, game? Didn't we do this already? I don't think we did. No, we did top anticipated games. Oh, okay. Because I wanted to do top ten games of... Uh, we have to... Our favorite. Have, like, in advance. We have to know it in advance. Oh, oh. That's what I think. Oh. You want to know what mine are? Because I already have mine. No. We're going to share them do you want, do you want together. Know what Matt, do you want to know what I am? No. I could do... Guess what's number one? Charter 2. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, spoiler for next week. What's your number one? Uncharted 2 or The Last of Us? It's probably one of those two. Probably a Zelda game. What? Yeah. Of this generation? Oh, of this generation. Oh, I mean, well, yeah, I guess we could do... Well, yeah, that's, that's the thing. We could do all time and top 10 of this generation. Okay. So, yeah. You know what I'm going to get myself when I get my next paycheck and on January? I'm going to get a 3DS. And I'm going to get Zelda A Link Between Worlds because that looks dope. Dope, man. And then you can get yourself a Wii U and play Wind Waker HD. Oh, man. I really want to play that. <laughs> Too bad you can't rent consoles. Did you know you could rent consoles back in the day? You could. I, re- I remember that. I had no idea. I remember that, yeah. You could I, rent PS2s. Man, that's crazy. I never knew you could do that. Um, imagine if you could rent the Wii U and play Zelda. I'd do it. And then give it back and never touch the Wii U again. <laughs> yeah, they really need to do something with the Wii U because that thing is... Because that console sucks. It's dying. That's what we believe here at Project Paper Street. Or, or, uh, God, what's the line? Oh, um, nope, forgot it. Oh, you've been played. You've been played. <laughs> Face it, genius. You've been, been played. played. All right, we're going to cut it right there.